Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to take a look at the Ghost Drone 2 from eHang. To keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. Now I'm curious to play with the Ghost, both because of its upside down motor configuration and the fact that it uses a smartphone or a tablet as your primary control input. So the first thing we find is the drone itself. And I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised by the weight. It feels substantial in my hands, but the airframe and the undercarriage are made of plastic and they definitely flex a bit when I apply torque to them. The motors are located on the underside of the limbs. Along with orientation lights, there's a status indicator light on the front of the aircraft, which is a bit of a peculiar choice because most people fly with the drone facing away from themselves. There's a cartridge style battery inserted in the front of the aircraft and it includes this nifty little OLED screen that lets you check its charge status. To remove the battery, press in on these two tabs and be advised it can be a bit snug. It's four cells, 14.8 volts with a 4500 milliamp hour capacity. Below the aircraft, we have a 4K camera with a three axis gimbal. And this did not come with any sort of retaining clip, by the way. Already installed, you'll find a micro SD card a 16 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra. This is a circular polarized 5.8 gigahertz antenna, which transmits real-time video from the drone to the ground. This contains your FPV video goggles. Across the top, we have lights for video, control, and power, and buttons for accessing the menu and making adjustments. On the other side is the power button, the channel search button, and the view switch button, which allows you to shift from the drone's point of view to this small camera on the front of the goggles. Here we have the micro USB port for charging the goggles and an AV out jack. Inside the case, we also have a lens cloth and antennas for your video and control signals. And underneath the goggles, we have another box containing the battery charger. These two boxes contain four propellers each, so two complete sets. This large box contains a set of four propeller guards. And here we have documents, a thank you note from the good folks at Ekang, a quick start guide, a packing list, a battery safety sheet, a warranty and support booklet, various disclaimers and statements, as well as a full printed manual. Very nice. And lastly, we have this little bundle which unrolls to reveal an A to micro B USB cable, a power cord for the charger, a prop wrench, a screwdriver and pouches containing screws for mounting the prop guards, spare vibration dampers for the gimbal, and what the packing list calls a load resistor. This is important. If you ever remove the video antenna from the aircraft, be sure to replace it with the load resistor. If you power up without one of them in place, you risk burning out your video transmitter. Let's get the batteries charging, so they're ready to go when it's time for us to fly. The Ghost Drone is controlled using a smart device with either an Android or iOS operating system, but do be aware, you must specify which one you're gonna use when you purchase the drone. The Ghost is different from other drones controlled by smart devices. Instead of connecting directly to the Ghost, your phone or tablet links to the goggles, which then relay your inputs up to the drone using a 2.4 gigahertz signal. I'm curious to see how this works, but first we need to install the app. It's called eHang Play. You'll also find an app called Ghost Drone, but that's for the earlier version one Ghost, so make sure you get eHang Play. First, we need to install the app. While that's installing, let's get the goggles ready. Install the antennas, ensuring that each one goes in its proper location. Notice that each jack and antenna is labeled either 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz. Now power up the goggles and then launch the Bluetooth manager if you're using an Android device. If you're using iOS, you'll launch the Wi-Fi manager and then the aircraft.
When it completes its initialization sequence, we can see live video from the camera through the goggles. Also, notice how the gimbal pitches as we tilt the goggles up and down. This confirms the aircraft is receiving control inputs. Now go ahead and launch the app. You'll need to create an account, which will involve entering a confirmation code sent to you by email from eHang. The app gives us access to three flight modes, touch and go, avatar, and waypoints. You'll notice you only get access to the more advanced flight modes once you've logged a few flights in touch and go. This may be frustrating for more advanced pilots, but it should help novices avoid making some painful mistakes. Now, let's mount the propellers and the prop guards. First, turn off the aircraft. Notice the propellers have either silver or black hubs. Match them up with the corresponding color on the motor shaft and turn in the direction indicated to lock them in place. With the propellers mounted, slide the prop guards into position and attach them with the included screws. Ehang recommends you use the prop guards when flying indoors, but remove them for outdoor flight. That's good advice all the way around. It's just unfortunate the process involves inserting and removing 12 tiny screws. All right, let's take her out in the field and see how she performs. So before you fly your ghost drone for the first time, you have to calibrate the compass. And before calibration, make sure that you have no metal objects in your person and you're standing away from cars, fences, anything else metal. This is very, very easy. You just go into the app, go to the little gear in the upper hand corner, and then click calibrate. The first thing you need to calibrate is your phone, since it is part of the equation. You do this by swinging your arm around in an infinity symbol while holding the phone. <laughs> Next thing you do is calibrate the aircraft. This is done by picking up the aircraft, as indicated on the phone, and rotating it clockwise. Now, after that's done, you put the nose of the aircraft down, and rotate clockwise again, and calibration is done. There are three flight modes on the Ghost. Touch and Go, Avatar, and Waypoint. Before you can unlock the full potential of the Ghost drone, you've got to complete a number of flights in the Touch and Go mode, which is sort of your beginner mode. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to have internet access to be able to see maps. So if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to complete this process. In Touch and Go mode, you tap takeoff, and the drone rises to about 50 feet and hovers. Then, you simply click on the map where you want it to go, and it moves to that location. You can't give it another point until it arrives at the first one, although you can always stop it immediately using the pause button. Avatar mode gives you direct control over the aircraft by tilting and twisting your phone. The drone uses the phone's sensors to fly by, so you hold the phone flat and take off and landing, and as you move the phone left and right, the aircraft goes left and right. Of course, forward and backward, same thing, and if you rotate the phone, the aircraft will yaw. On the top there, you've got an aircraft orientation indicator and, of course, the, the horizon. Here's a takeoff button here. And once you're flying, you've got an altitude control. At the bottom of the screen, we have our telemetry. And a side note, the volume buttons have been remapped to take photographs and video. And, of course, you've got the ever-present pause button. So, this is surprisingly responsive. I'm actually impressed. Typically, phones controlling drones I don't like, but this is functional. It's a little awkward, but neat. And if the phone does something weird, like a phone call, it pauses the drone. That's actually very handy. I was concerned about that because, well, you know, you get a phone call and the drone goes flying off somewhere. Nope, it works just great. The, well, my only weird thing is the yaw. You have to kind of turn the phone in circles to get it to come and look at you. Yeah, there it is. It, it, it's a little, it, then of course, everything's backwards. And landing, for not having optical flow, it is very smooth, it just lands. So that feature works exceptionally well. In waypoint mode, you set up a predetermined route for the ghost to follow, which it executes once you click go, flying from one point to the next in the order that you established. Now, here's a time lapse of our flight endurance test. So now we're going to give you a look at the FPV system and the onboard video recording. 
But one thing we've already noticed is the batteries on these goggles tend to run down pretty quickly. So we've added a little external USB battery source to keep us flying. One other thing we've noticed is that the Ghost Drone starts recording every single time you power it up. So be aware of that, and if you don't want it recording, stop it and then restart it when you're ready. All right, so I'm flying in avatar mode, and I'm not gonna lie, this is a very peculiar way to fly a drone. When you rotate your whole body to take in the scene, it really does give you that out-of-body experience as the aircraft tracks with you. That's a pretty unique experience, I have to say. That's fun. One more thing to be aware of is if you tilt your phone too far, further than the drone wants to go, it'll give you some quick haptic feedback. It's another nice little feature. I've got the head tracking turned on, so as I look down, the camera on the drone looks down in a very natural way, and you can see why they call this avatar mode. Although, I have to confess, I'm, I'm a little bit troubled because I'm trying to control other aircraft functions, like roll with my head, and obviously that doesn't work. So I think it's going to take me a little practice to really get dialed in, like to control the aircraft sort of intuitively with the phone in my hand and the gimbal control on my head. I'd suggest when you do this, Give yourself some time. Even if you're an experienced pilot, this is going to take a little while for you to get used to. Start flying eyes on, and then transition to using the goggles. One final thing to be aware of when you're flying the Ghost Drone is that there's no obvious emergency cutoff in the app. And that's an oversight. There always needs to be a way to stop the propellers from spinning, regardless of the circumstances, in case something truly dangerous happens. If you grab hold of the aircraft in flight, you cannot turn it off using the power button. It just keeps turning. The only way to stop it is to flip it upside down. And that's not a good solution. So that was our look at the Ghost Drone 2.0 from Ehang. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe.